My boss is terrible, period, I gotta punctuate it I said I loved your shirt, but behind your back I said I hate it The lightning strike me down, if I lied, me no one be around when my tongue's untied Everybody says it's okay, all the little things I say with my big fat mouth La 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 la
mouth. If I had a tube of toothpaste, I would squirt it out on the table and I would say, now put all that back in the tube and you'd try and you would just make a mess. It would be really, really difficult. Well, actually, it's impossible. You can't put it back in. And the yeah. words that come out of our mouths, we can't take them back. Yeah. The, the mouth is such a powerful orifice. <laughs> it's powerful. And the words that come out, they can either build up or they can tear down. They can yeah. remind God who he is and how great, how, how great he is and how grateful we are for him and the things he does. Or we can complain about everything that's going wrong and how he's just not right. But what kind of person are you? Our, our mouths, every one of the mouths in this room are filled with something. Sure. My question for you is what is filling yours? Good. What's filling your mouth this morning? And we got to take a step back and, and you have to start with what am I thinking about? Right. What am I allowing in, in my mind? What am I meditating on? Because whatever is inside of me is probably going to come out my mouth. So yeah. what's in your mind? What's in your heart? What's in your mouth this morning? Yeah. Are you one of those people that when you, I'm talking about perspective. If you look at a glass, it's half empty. Is it half empty or half full? Half full, half empty. What is it to you? Are you one of those people that you're like, I, I love the outdoors, I love, I just love all the beautiful trees, love going to the Ozarks and Branson, just seeing all the trees. Or are you like, I, I can't see the woods for all the trees. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see the, because there's so many stinking trees, I can't even see the woods. You're so negative. What is your problem? No. <laughs> are you one of those people that you're just constantly, are you, a, are you a, a, a complainer and an energy drainer? Are you one of those people? Do you just constantly, rah, 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 rah. hey, listen, I got a word for you this morning. I got a word for you because all of us, here's, here's the reality. Yeah. All of us have a tendency to complain. Yeah. I'm going to start right here. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's, it's, it's so hard. Yeah. This right here is, is the most powerful, most lethal part of your whole body. All right? Now, I know, I know what you're thinking, but Pastor Brad, you're a ninja. I know ah! you're thinking. <laughs> I know you're thinking that That's these exactly fists exactly what they were thinking. That these fists are lethal and these elbows and these knees and these feet. Yes, they are. I'm just but the, the tongue is much more lethal than any of this ninja body parts right here, all right? Lethal. Stop laughing. Okay. James. James had something to say about the mouth. I want you to hear what he had to say. James three and verse two. He said, For we all stumble. That pretty much sums it up, doesn't it? <laughs> Each and every one of us stumble and we sin in so many ways. Yeah. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's being kind of sarcastic here, never saying the wrong thing, he is a perfect man. Fully developed in character, without serious flaws, able to bridle his whole body and rein in his entire nature, taming his human faults and weaknesses. Let's skip down to verse 7. He says, for every species of beasts and birds and reptiles and sea creatures is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But no one can tame the human tongue. Hmm. It is a restless evil. It's undisciplined. It's unstable. It's full of deadly poison. <sighs> right? With it, we bless our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse men at the same time. Yeah. We have been made in the likeness of God. I want you to get this. This is so, so rich and so powerful. We are made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth come blessing and cursings. These things, my brothers, listen, shall not be this way. For we have a moral obligation. Will you say that with me? Moral obligation. We have a moral obligation to speak in a manner that reflects our fear of of God and profound wow. respect for his precepts. You know what that's wow. saying? That's good. Here's what it's saying. When we speak, we have a responsibility, a moral responsibility, a spiritual mm -hmm. responsibility to speak life, that's right. to speak hope, yeah. to speak encouragement, not only to God, but also to his creation, all right? Yeah. And to our circumstances. We have a spiritual responsibility to speak hope and life and encouragement Amen. to God our Father, to the ones He has created, right. and also to our circumstances. Let me break it down for you real quick. God, that's a given, all right? We're not going to curse God. He is the ultimate. He's awesome. He's unbelievable. We love Him. He's our, our master and our savior. When we curse one another, and that's a strong word, okay, but when we tear each other down, or we can playing about one another what we're doing is we are attacking the ones he died for that's right 
were attacking the ones that he made in his own image. And so he takes that very, very personally. When we attack one another, when we tear each other down with this, this ninja mouth right here, when we tear each other down, we're hurting his heart yeah. because we are his children. Whether sure. you believe in God, live for God, or you don't, he died for you and he loves you. That's right. And you are worth dying for. So when we mouth one another, we are mouthing God. And when we mouth our circumstances, you know what we're doing? We're telling him that what he has done and what he's doing isn't good enough. That's good. And so we have to capture those Ouch. thoughts like we talked about in the last series. We have to mm-hmm. capture those thoughts and realize, okay, sure. it's a given. It's going gonna, it's gonna to start here, but you have to make it end here. You can't let it go drain out the brain and out of the mouth. You can't let it drain out. You can't let it come out of your mouth. Our words are so powerful. There's a Japanese scientist, this is crazy, Japanese scientist in the late 90s. His name was Masaru Imuto, all right? I think I hit that right. He performed lots of experiments in the late 1990s regarding the power of words. Now, to my knowledge, this guy was not a believer. He was a secular scientist, but he was trying to prove through nature, through science, that our words as human beings are powerful. So here's what he did. He took these two tanks full of water, okay? And there, through the uh, freezing, pro- he began freezing both tanks, all right? And while the water was being frozen, he was speaking positive words to one tank of water. I know this sounds really, really out there, okay? But he was speaking to the water, Speaking positive words of, I don't know what he said. Oh, water, you are so clear. Look at you. You're so, I bet if I tasted you, you'd be so refreshing. You water, you're the most beautiful water I've ever seen. I don't know what he was saying, but it was probably in Japanese. Like, watashi wa nihongo hanase masen. Tadakimasu arigato. That's all I know. The other tank, he was like mocking it and saying these negative things. He was speaking these negative words to the tank of water. And I'm sure when his assistant came through the room, he's like, what are you doing? You're crazy. Cray, cray. So while he's speaking these words, the, wa- the tanks of water are being frozen. So here's what happened. This is going to blow your mind. The tank of water that he was speaking negative words to, it formed these ugly, unclear, cloudy crystals of water in, in the pattern of the, of the frozen water when he, when he studied it. And then he came over to the water that he spoke life to and spoke encouragement, and it was clear, and and the formations of crystal were different. They were beautiful, clear crystal formations in the frozen water. And his scientific conclusion was there there really is power. There is something to when we speak to creation, living things. Isn't that amazing? Now, he may not know what conclusion he had come to, but I do. The Bible speaks very, 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 very clearly about his conclusion. And it says this in Proverbs 18 and 21. It says, the tongue can bring life or it can bring death. That's right. When you think about this, think about the tongue and think about your words. Your words can tear somebody down or you can build somebody up. Mm -hmm. Those who love to talk, oh, this is a good one. We need to post this in our home. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences, right? Right? Think about this. The tongue, the mouth, it is so powerful. Henry Ford said this. He said, if whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. That's right. You're probably right. Listen to me. When Jesus died, okay, he came back to life. God gave him all authority in heaven and on earth. All right? Now, the Bible also says that we were crucified with Christ, and it's not us who live, but it's Christ who lives inside of us, and we're made in the likeness of God and in his image. So when we speak, whether we have come to Christ and have a relationship with him or we don't, we're all made in the likeness of God. So when we speak, our words are powerful. That's right. Our words are powerful. Our words can bring death or they can bring life. We can thank God for what's happening or we can complain about what's not happening right. So King David was a man who understood the power of words, even at a very, very young age. King David was 20 years old when he was anointed to be king. Now understand the history here. King Saul is the first king of Israel, the nation of Israel. He strays away from God and God appoints a new king, this young shepherd boy. He's appointed to be king and he's not yet king. God allows him to go in and serve God. King Saul in his presence, and he ends up putting him out in the military, and he rises above all the ranks, and the women begin to sing his praises. They used to sing for King Saul, but now the women sing, Saul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his 
tens of thousands, all right? The guy is 20 years old when King Saul decides enough with David. He's not serving in my court any longer. I'm not going to listen to the women sing praises about him any longer. King Saul decided to exile him and have him murdered, all right? Now, if you know the story, you know that God trumps it all, and that's not what happened to David. But when he was 20 years old, he runs for his life. So he leaves his home country, and he goes only about 20 miles away, all right? But by foot, that was a long way, to the Philistine country, which was enemy territory, the country of Gath, all right? And he goes before the king of Gath, and... Actually, the reason is because people recognized him. He didn't think they would, but they did, and they call him in before the king. And so he plays like he's insane. Now, some of you guys could do this. There's a couple in here right now. I could call you up here, and you could play like you were completely insane. He began drooling at the mouth. He began pulling his hair out. He began, the Bible says he's clawing the walls. Now, Brad and I were, were watching The Grinch the other night. If you've ever watched The Grinch, right, it's Christmas classic. It's kind of like that when he tries to scare Cindy what Lou Who. Cin- Cindy yeah, Lou she's Who. inviting him to the party, and he's not wanting to go. And she's like, "What are you doing in my lair?" And she's screaming at her, "Yeah, yeah!" So he goes trying completely to convince her crazy. this isn't going to happen. So that was Brad's idea of what King David must have yeah. been doing. All right. So King David proves that he's completely crazy, and the king of Gath lets him go. Now, why did I tell you that? Because if you open your Bible to Psalms thirty-four and one, a scripture you've probably heard of. This scripture was written right after David has one been exiled and two barely got away with his life by acting completely insane by the king of Gath. This is what it says, Psalms 34 and 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, it's interesting when you study the Bible, and that's why Brad and I are always talking about studying your Bible, not just listening to it, not just reading it, study it. Begin to understand what was going on when the writer wrote that particular section of the Word of God. Because when you read this on a good day, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, and everything is going right. That is an easy scripture to quote and just be on cloud nine. But when everything is not going right and you're running for your life or it feels like all hell has broken loose or the doctor has told you that you've got some kind of incurable disease or your kids are so out of control that you don't know what to do with them, whatever the circumstances are, when you feel like your life is out of control, it's a little bit more difficult to say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But that's what King David was saying. He wasn't saying, God, why did you anoint me king and then make me be exiled? Why am I out here in the middle of no mansville in this countryside running for my life? Why, God, would you not just take Saul out? Guys, did you know that he was exiled for 10 years? King David ran for his life for 10 years. Years after having been anointed king, God says, man, I got a special calling on your life. You know, when God speaks to us and he says, I got a plan for you, we're like, oh, tomorrow, score. (laughs) No, you know what God wanted to do is he wanted to take him through a testing period. He wanted to take him through some trials. He wanted to see, can I trust you? Are you really going to be the man that will put all of your trust in me no matter what is going on? Will you believe what I said is true? Will you believe that you're really going to be king? Will you believe that you can really do what I've called you to do? Will you really just surrender it and shut your mouth and just follow after me? You see, when he said, I will, what he was saying is, I make a declaration. I am determined that no matter what, I believe he was saying this speaking to himself and the enemy. Because sometimes you have to speak to yourself. Like, Misty, shut your mouth. Amen. I heard that phrase so many times growing up. Misty, shut your mouth. That it was so ingrained in my brain. That growing up as an adult, sometimes I just tell myself, I can hear my father ringing in my ears, and I say it to myself, Misty, shut your mouth. Like, what's wrong with you? You mess everything up when you just keep talking. You know what I mean? Stop it. He said, I will. And then he said, bless. What does it mean to bless? It means to give honor and glory to God. It's good. To give honor and glory to God. For what? I'm running for my life? No, that God is still in control. No matter what the doctor said. No matter what's going on in your home. 
Even when your children that you raised in church are no longer living for God, don't believe the lies that the enemy says that they'll never come back. Stand on the word of God and say, God, I choose to bless you in the good times and in the bad. He said, at all times, not just when everything is going right. And he says, your praise, the things that I'm thankful for, will continually be in my mouth. So here's the question. If God's praise and honor and glory is constantly filling your mouth, that's what you're speaking. How can there be room for anything else? If you make a decision, and see, that's what it is. It's a choice. Before the thoughts even form, you choose today. God, I choose no matter what. I choose to bless you at all times. Because I can't be complaining and draining everybody else's energy around me and my own if I choose to fill my mouth with praise. You know, the very opposite of that you see in the Old Testament. We talk about these guys so much because the Old Testament is written all about them. But the children of Israel was this group of people who God had such an incredible plan for their life. He delivers them out of Egypt. They go into the wilderness, and man, he has such an incredible plan. I'm going to give you the promised land. A land that's inhibited right now, inhabited right now with giants, but I'm going to give it to you. And all they needed to do was just trust God. All they needed to do was just put their faith in God and shut their mouth. But they just couldn't do it. You know what's interesting is when you look up the word complaint in the dictionary, this is what it means. A complaint is actually an accusation. Now think about this. If a complaint is an accusation, then when we complain, what we're really doing is we're making an accusation against God himself. That you know what, God? You obviously are mismanaging my day. Because did you not know I had an appointment and now I have a flat? Like seriously, when you start complaining, what you're doing is you're telling God, you're mismanaging my life. I don't have time for the circumstances I'm in. God, what are you doing? God, you anointed me to be king and now I'm running for my life for 10 years. What good can come of that? And yet God always has a plan. God just wants to know, will you trust me? Because the opposite of complaining is blessing. The opposite of complaining is thanking God in all circumstances and saying, God, even though this looks really grim and even though I cannot completely understand what you're doing, I choose to trust you. And I choose with my mouth to speak words of blessing. My marriage will last. My children will serve God. We are going to make it financially. You begin to speak life. You know, the scientific study, when Brad came across that, I was like, that is the most crazy thing I've ever heard of. And yet, science, you know, the scientists do all kinds of studies all the time. And do you know what happens all the time? They prove the word of God is real. In the, Even if in they the don't name, believe it. In the name of phenomenon. Exactly. All the time. It Just proves one of the natural that there mysteries is, of this earth. That's like, right. Yeah. <laughs> the power of life and death truly is in our tongue. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 10 and 11, look at what happened to the Israelites. It says this, And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by this dr- destroying angel. Thank God, I think he has more mercy on us. These things have happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. Paul was talking to a group of people, and if you go to the New Testament, you can see the verse that I got quoted growing up all the time. Because, guys, this was an area of my life I struggled really hard in. And Paul said, do not grumble and complain. And when he said that, he began to explain to them, because you know why? Because the children of Israel, God actually killed them. Many of them were killed. Thousands were killed. Because they just continued to grumble and complain. God, we're tired of the manna you've provided us for 40 years. God, we don't have any water. And obviously what they were doing is accusing him of not being able to provide for them. When honestly, the more you grumble and complain, the more God lets you just rot right there. Mm -hmm. The more you grumble and complain, the more he says, you know what? Go ahead. Do it yourself. It's kind of like parenting. If your kids are grumbling and complaining about what they don't have, Does it make you want to go out and buy them something? I hate these shoes. I'm sick of these shoes. What's wrong with them? We just got to, I don't even like them. They're not the newest thing out there anymore. And you're like, 
What is wrong with you, child? But if they were coming in saying, man, thanks you for these shoes. You know, I can't wait. When these wear out, I really want those new Jordans or I really want those new whatever. You would be way, way, way more apt to go buy those kids those shoes if you were in a position to. But when they run their mouth and they grumble and they complain about what they don't have, you're like, you can wear them with duct tape on them. I don't give a rip. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Go tape them up. Let your pride just go ahead and wallow just a little bit because this mom ain't buying you nothing. Go get yourself a job. (laughs) My kids have all heard that. Numbers 11 and 1 says this. The people were soon complaining about their misfortune and the Lord heard them. Guys, he hears every word that comes out of our mouth. He sees our thoughts. That's why we need to take those rebellious thoughts captive. But when it comes out of our mouth, not only do other people hear it, but God himself is hearing it. His anger flared out against them because of their complaints. So the fire of the Lord began destroying them as far as the end of the camp. I want to tell you a quick little story. When Brad and I came here and we were living in the mobile home, you know, God had done so much that was undeniable. It was him. We sold our home in Joplin. We bought a home in cash. We bought a mobile home. I mean, a, a minivan in cash. And so, Sweet minivan. you know, it wasn't what we wanted. It wasn't at all what we wanted. You know, we, we had dreams of what we wanted, and this wasn't it. But we had a choice in front of us. We either complain about what God had given us, or we choose to be thankful. And I remember when that mobile home that we had remodeled, it started basically falling apart. And if you live in a mobile home or you ever have, you kind of know they're just, a lot of times, especially the old ones, were not built to last like a real home. And so... With four babies in. With four babies and Brad, and it was and just, it was just not holding up. I'm just going to leave it at the four babies. All right. And so I remember, like, the front door, water started coming in and rotting the floor, and the roof started leaking, and there were multiple, multiple problems, right? And... Brad and I found ourselves starting to complain, and I'll, be, I'll tell on Brad a little more than myself, oh, thank okay? You, honey. <laughs> so I tried really hard to not talk too much because I knew, and wives, here's a tip, okay? If you're mouthing about your house or your money, you're mouthing your husband, all right? Yeah. Just because they are, by God, God has given them the innate ability to provide for you, and so if I would have been griping about my home, Brad would have felt even more pressure to do something about it, all right? And so I was trying really hard, but he was like, had had it. I mean, he had had it. When you walk in and you almost sink at the front door, and the, the, the color of the ceiling had changed colors because it was leaking, shingles. and he didn't know. Every time the wind blew, shingles were flying off He's the like, roof. I don't know how to fix this stuff. God, I'm not a carpenter. And I remember him praying and, like, screaming. Like, why? We give our life for the church, and my whole house is falling apart, and I don't have, I, I don't have what it takes. I don't even know how to take care of this junk. Da, 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 da. And I remember he went outside one day, and he was praying. And he came back in. It was one of those mad prayers. Yeah, he was ticked. He was ticked off. And listen, God can handle it. All right? God can handle it. It doesn't really get you anywhere, but God can handle it. And so he comes back in, and he was kind of pouting a little bit. And I was like, kind of trying to just choose my words wisely. Hey, next service, can we use you as an illustration? Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) There's plenty of stories on me, all right? And so he comes back in, and he said, man, God is just speaking to me. And this is what he said. Why would I ever bless you with a new home if you're not even thankful for the one you have right now? And guys, we were looking for a new house. And what we were really wanting in our heart was just a new home. We wanted to get out of the mobile home. We didn't want to fix the messes because we didn't really feel like we knew how. We didn't want to spend any more money on it. We just wanted a new home. And he said, I'm not going to bless you until you take care of what I've given you and you choose to have a different attitude. And so you know what Brad did? Like that next day, he goes to Lowe's and he buys shingles. Like we know how to put shingles on. Nope. Go get them. Like what? how hard can it be? You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. So we put some shingles on the roof and we hired somebody to fix the front door because we didn't know what to do on that. But we, we put out like $2,500 to fix this junk that was wrong and we did as much as we could ourselves and we chose to change our words and change our thoughts and our attitude. And you know what God did? It wasn't very long at all. God dropped the home that we now live in right in our lap. We had been looking for almost 18 months for a home and gave up because what we wanted was nowhere to be found. 
The home that we now live in wasn't even on the market for sale at the time. And it's a half a mile from here, and I'm not telling you where it's at. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's so close that it was completely God. He was like, I'm saving this place for you, but you won't shut your shut mouth your so mouth. I can even give it to you. You know what I'm saying? We were doing what the Israelites were doing, just grumbling and complaining and walking in circles. In circles. And so if you're tired of walking in circles in your life, shut and your you'd mouth. like to see God move, then I would just suggest a very simple little tactic. Shut your mouth. Stop the complaining and choose instead like David to say, God, I will bless you at all times. Your praise will continually be in my mouth. Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees. Those were the religious rulers of the day, but these guys weren't right in their hearts. They were, they were all in it to make money and they wanted fame and the fortune and all that. And so their hearts weren't right. And so when they spoke, the words that came out of their mouths, he said, when you guys speak, it's venom. You guys are a brood of vipers. Here, here's Jesus guys down well they're his creation he can do that <laughs> and he's telling them you guys you guys are a mess look at you your your home is hell is what he told them he said every time you open your mouth i just see venom you're just spewing out all the all this venom you guys are hypocrites and this is what he said to them he said in matthew 12 and 34 he said whatever is in your heart will determine what you say and that's so true yeah. when you think about that whatever is in your heart whatever is in your mind will determine what comes out your mouth so the question really is when you take this sponge it's like your mouth whatever's whatever's inside your your heart whatever you filled your heart up with in your mind when you get squeezed whatever's on the inside is going to come out so you have to ask yourself what am i allowing to remain in my heart what am, what thoughts am i entertaining what thoughts Good. am i allowing to stay in my heart and in my life because when i get squeezed and when i just have had enough Whatever's on the inside is going to come out. So I want to ask you, yeah. we said it at the beginning of the service, all of us, all of our mouths are filled with something. Our hearts are filled with something. Mm. The question is, what's filling yours? What's filling your mouth? Because whatever's filling your mouth is what's going to come out. And I want to encourage yeah. you guys, make the decision like David did. He okay. said, I will. I choose. I make the decision. I'm going to be very intentional. Yeah. I'm going to be very proactive. I'm going to think about, I will right. bless the Lord at all. at all times. His praises, the things I'm thankful for, will continually, continually, continually be in yeah. my mouth. There's no room Amen. for anything else. You and I, we have to make a decision each and every day, guys. Mm -hmm. We have to make a choice. Right now, okay. what are we going to allow to fill our heart and our mind? What are we going to allow to come out? Are you going to curse the Lord and his creation and your circumstances? Or are you going to bless the Lord? Are you going to be Man. thankful for everything regardless? Because regardless of your circumstances, God yes. is Amen. good. Amen. Has, right. God Amen. is good regardless. And he is always worthy That's of right. our praise. What's filling your mouth? What's coming out? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Thank Jesus, you. we are so God, grateful you, Father, for all the things you've done. God, there might be those in this room today, thank you, Jesus. they just feel like everything is going wrong. I pray, God, that you would help us mm -hmm. to look to the one who has made it all right. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, God, that you would help us to see things from your perspective. I pray, God, that you would help us to be mindful that heaven is our home. There's so many things, God, to be thankful for. No matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, God, we can always be grateful. We can always choose to bless you, God. We can always choose to praise you and to be thankful, God, to you for all the things that you've done, all the things that you're doing, and all the things that you are about to do. And God, I pray, Lord, if there's those in our lives where, God, it's just so difficult for us to have anything good to say about these people. I pray that you would remind us every time we look at that person. Help us to be mindful that you died for them. Yes, that you love them. You've given them an opportunity as you have me and everyone else to call upon the name of Jesus. That you would write our name in the Lamb's book of life. Help us, God, to see people differently the way you see them. And help us, God, when we open our mouths, help us to not complain, but to bless. To bless you. To bless those around us. To be thankful, God, for all of our circumstances, no matter what they offer us. Help us today, Lord. 
Help us, God, to fill our mouths with your praises. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to know if I want to know if you have made the decision to make Jesus your Lord. We do this every week, and this is so important to us because this church exists to lead people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that's contagious. And I want to know, I want you to know, before you leave this place, that heaven can be your home, that you can live with him forever. Jesus loves you so much, he died for you. If that's you in this place and you want a real relationship with him, heads bowed, eyes closed, I want to pray with you right where you are. I'm not going to embarrass you, but we're just going to pray together as a church. If you're in this room and you want Jesus as your Savior, would you raise your hand at this place? Holy Spirit, thank you, Father. Sweet Jesus. Amen. Amen. Church, let's pray this prayer together, can we? Say, Father, I love you. Father, I love you. I know I've sinned. I know I've sinned. There's things I've said. There's things I've said. I regret. I regret. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. It's only through Him I can be saved. It's only through Him I can be saved. I call on you, Jesus. I call on you, Jesus. Today. Today. Right now. Right now. To fill my heart. To fill my heart. Fill my mouth. Fill my mouth. I confess you as Lord. I confess you as Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If you made that decision today. We have a gift for you. It's called our Next Step Kit. Pick it up on the left as you exit. And just a reminder, in order for the things in your heart to change so that the things out of your mouth change, you need to be in your word. So make sure, if you don't have one, grab one for yourself. But make sure you're in the word this week. Will you just put your hands together this morning for Jesus? (laughs) Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.